Are you constantly checking into your body to see whether the same sensations and symptoms from yesterday are there today? Do you feel like you always have to protect yourself from some kind of disease or illness constantly? If you answered yes to those questions, today's video is for you. Welcome to another important video on my channel, my friends. If you haven't subscribed yet to the number one anxiety support channel on YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell for all the notifications, and let's move forward making progress not only over anxiety, but towards total transformation together, my friends. So please subscribe today. And today's video is about the checking in pattern, okay? The checking in pattern that tends to take over our lives, doesn't it? I mean, I've asked so many people, hey, what do you want to see? What do you want to hear from this week's video? And, and a lot of them said, well, I'm just so fixated on my body all the time. My focus is always turning to my sensations, my symptoms, my emotional state, you know, my mind. I'm always in here. I'm never out there. And, and yes, I've done a few videos on this in the past, but it's a topic that is important to revisit because what tends to happen for a lot of people is they feel like they are this checking in pattern and they don't realize that it's just something that they're doing. They don't realize that they're stuck in a habit. They're stuck in a pattern. And what tends to happen is after some time, a lot of these people tend to feel like they have to continue to check in or else the worst is going to happen. So I want to go through a couple of points today that are going to speak to you as well. Towards the end of this video, I want to give you a couple solutions, very powerful solutions that you can start using today to start reversing this pattern, my friends, okay? First thing to remember is that we check in because the act of checking in makes us believe that we are protecting ourselves from the worst, like a parent checking in on their baby, right? Your baby is your body, and you feel like you always have to nurture and check in on your baby. And this is different than self-care, right? This is kind of an obsession over your sensations and symptoms. And so we get into this act of checking in because it feels like we're protecting ourselves, when in truth, we're just wasting a lot of time and energy. And I want to speak about energy a little bit because when you wake up in the morning, you only have a certain degree of energy to give to your day. So if you're always checking in on your sensations and symptoms and you're feeding the fear by checking in, you're not saying, hey, body, I'm going to leave you to yourself and you can heal this on your own. No, we're not going through the day with that amount of trust. We do not trust the body. Therefore, we feel the need to check in all the time to see what's going on. And we're losing a lot of energy. And when 2 p.m., 3 p.m. comes around, we feel like we're absolutely exhausted. We have nothing to give to other people, the relationships around us. Then what starts to happen? Then the guilt starts to set in. And then we start to victim victimize ourselves and go, oh my God, I'm letting myself down. I'm letting other people down. I can't focus on my career. I come home and I just want to take a nap or I want to just go and eat the, the quickest junk food that I can find in the fridge, you know, just to make me feel a bit better, to gain some energy back. So this goes far beyond just the habit of checking in. This is eating up your finite resource known as your energy. And we have to begin reversing this today, my friends. Now, we have become consumed, consumed by the fear of what may take place within our inner world. So we shut out what is taking place in our outside world, right? We don't realize that time is passing by. Things are happening around us. People are speaking. The birds are chirping. 
The cats are meowing. We don't realize what's going on in the outside world because we're so consumed with our inside world. And we have begun associating this checking in system to taking care of ourselves. And this fuels our health anxiety and our anxiety even more. You are not taking care of yourself by constantly checking in on your symptoms. That's a more than anxiety moment right there. And the idea of stopping this pattern makes us believe that we're no longer taking care of ourselves. And it feels like we no longer care about the mind, body, and spirit. When in truth, when we start to leave this pattern, we feel naked in the beginning. We feel vulnerable in the beginning, right? But only in the beginning. Then we start to build trust in a new idea because I remember, and I'm going to share this with you guys because this is very, very important. At a certain part during my anxiety disorders, I was starting to experience nausea. And as I was experiencing that nausea, I was wondering, what's going on here? Like, you know, this is coming out of nowhere. And as I dug deeper into this, okay, I realized that nausea had a lot to do, of course, with the mental and emotional side of things. But it had a lot to do with not being able to digest a new idea. (sighs) Not being able to digest a new idea. Checking in is the idea of protection. Checking out, meaning I'm focused on the outside world more than my inside world, is the idea that I need to accept something new in my life. And I had a very difficult time doing that, right? I don't know about you. Comment below if this is the case with you. So because I had a very difficult time digesting a new idea around trust, I was experiencing the nausea. And the truth is, when I started to open myself up to those new ideas around trust, the sensations and symptoms subsided. But not only that, I stopped looking in the mirror and seeing a victim. I stopped looking in the mirror and seeing a health anxiety sufferer or a hypochondriac. I stopped doing that. I started looking in the mirror and go, you're nothing. And nothing is a good thing because from nothing we can begin to create something. So when I was looking in the mirror, I was going, I don't really know who you are anymore. And that's good because I no longer see myself as an anxiety sufferer. From this point, I got to choose who I was, meaning what thoughts do I give energy to? What words do I express deeply? Which emotional states do I invest in? And what I found and this helped me with health anxiety, is I began to invest my energy into a future that was unknown, a future me that I wanted to be in that very moment, rather than focusing my energy on trying to prevent the worst from happening. So my energy and my focus was turned to something else, right? As focus and energy is turned to our bodily sensations, we strengthen them unknowingly. So... What's interesting here is that the part of you that is spurring on the sensations and symptoms known as the unconscious side of you is also the part of you that wants you to check in on them, okay? So this is, this is all coming from the same place of fear. So here are the symptoms as a message of overwhelm as a message of protection from any kind of future threat. Here are the symptoms based on the amount of fear that you've invested in. Here are the sensations and symptoms. And that part of you is also saying you've got to check in on them so that you don't step outside your boundaries, your boundaries that may place you in an unfamiliar place, unfamiliar territory. So you can see what's going on here. The inner child right? The unconscious mind that is the body as well is playing tricks on us, trying to keep us within this limited bubble, right? And we walk around in our bubble and every single time we look to step outside of our bubble, either through thought or through action, what tends to happen is we tend to feel the adrenaline pump. And when the adrenaline pump hits and the adrenal glands are starting to secrete, all this adrenaline, 
what tends to happen is that's a sign from the unconscious mind that, hey, this is dangerous, not because it's really dangerous, but it's dangerous because it's unfamiliar, right? And because it's unfamiliar, here's the adrenaline pump to get you back into your comfort zones. And comfort zones are not just environments. Comfort zones are ways of thinking about things, checking in, fear, 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 anger, sadness, victimhood, you know, doing the same things you do each and every day, trying to distract yourself from the symptoms by scrolling on your phone all the time. These are all your comfort zones coming from the unconscious mind. Let's stop for a second. I want you to comment below and tell me what the biggest epiphany was for you in this video so far. Okay, comment below. Now, let's get into solutions. Let's get into solutions because, I mean, this checking in thing can really become an identity, right? It can be a part of our personality. It's just who I am. Well, it's not who you are. It's just something that you're doing. So, the first thing you want to start doing, and I'm going to use this word very often when it comes to checking in, and the word is trust, okay, trust. Begin to strengthen your trust in letting your body do whatever it is doing, right? Letting your body do whatever it is doing. And let me attribute this to this, okay? You have a child. Okay, you have a child, and it's one of the first times that the child is playing on the playground. And right, and, and you, you're kind of going, oh, what's my child doing? Oh, are they going to hurt themselves? Be careful, right? Oh, don't play with that. And play over here. Play with this person, right? And you're kind of hovering all the time, which is very, very similar to checking in on your symptoms, right? But... I want you to be the kind of parent that goes, there's a bench over there. I'm going to go sit on that bench and I'm going to observe what my child is doing at a safe distance, right? And so you're observing calmly. Okay, they're playing over there. They're on the monkey bars, going down the slides and the swings. And you're, you're not looking to control the situation so much, but you're more so an observer. And when you become an observer, you start to strengthen your trust in leaving things alone. The key is to become the observer, which strengthens your trust, your trust in an idea that you want to adopt into your life. Okay, so I want you to begin seeing yourself as the parent that sits on the bench and watches the child play on the playground, meaning watching your sensations and symptoms as your body does whatever it needs to. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, Dennis, it's so strong that I can't do that. It's very difficult for me to do that. But here's the truth. It's only difficult initially. It's only difficult initially to begin building trust in a new action and an idea. Initially, you're going to get this, this jolt, like we talked about, the adrenaline pump, right? The unconscious mind is going to go, no, 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 we don't like that, right? We want you to be the hovering, smothering kind. We want you to check in on the, the sensations, add to the fear, okay? And then initially, once you get over that hump of that initial adrenaline pump and you keep on the path, of building trust and leaving your body to do what it needs to do, then it gets easier. And this is something that a lot of people don't realize. A lot of people give up on themselves too easily. Is this you? Comment below if it is. Do you give up on something that you're doing easily? Do you give up on trust too easily? Do you give up on a new identity that you're trying to create too easily? If this is the case, we have to learn from our past. And if we learn from our past, we can go, hey, these elements, I cannot keep up with these elements today because I know they're, they're not going to work. I have to stay on this path for a longer period of time in order for me to see results. Okay. Now, the second solution is instead of checking in, immediately check out. Now, here's how you do it. Okay. You check out by jumping and turning around, looking behind you and recognizing what you see, hear, and feel, okay? So we need a state break in that moment. We need to give your unconscious mind something it does not expect. So you jump and you turn around and you immediately 
go, oh, I see that new paint job. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Look at the paint there. It's really, really nice. Okay, what do you hear? I hear the birds chirping. Oh, it's like they're they're playing a melody, a song. I really, really love it. So you can focus on what you are seeing, hearing, and feeling. I'm touching uh, the clothes right there, and I can feel the fabric of the clothes. And this is going to bring your anxiety down quite a bit, and it's also going to get you to begin focusing on the outside world and less on the inside world, which means you're not really distracting yourself, but you're saying, hey, body, whatever you're doing, go ahead and do that. There's no need for me to check in and feed on to the fear, okay? So you can do this. I'm going to add this in the description as well if you want a deeper description of this, but you can do this at any time. You just jump, you turn around, notice what you see, hear, and feel, put energy and focus onto those three things, and then move about your day, okay? So a very, very powerful solution. And this, I mentioned this, but I'm going to mention it again. I want you to see the act of checking in as something that you do, not a part of who you are. Because if you think it's who you are, then to eliminate it and replace it with something else is going to be very, very difficult. But if you notice that it's just something that you're doing, it's much easier to change something that you're doing rather than change something that you are, right? So we're going to move away from thinking that we are a victim, thinking that we are health anxiety, thinking that we are generalized anxiety, because we walk around with these labels on our heads all day long. And the way we treat ourselves is the way other people treat us. So we have to understand that this is all energetic. To some degree, this is, this is energetic right here, okay? And so it's something that you're doing. The checking in is something that you're doing. It's a do. It's not a be. And because it's a do, you can always change what you're doing. But in order to change what you're doing, you have to be as passionate about something else as you are of the checking in pattern. Because when you check in, you're passionate, right? You're passionate about, I got a lot of passion around this. I'm checking in because I've got a reason for this. It makes me feel protected. I'm checking in on my symptoms. I feel safe in this moment. It's what I always do, yada, yada, yada. So we need to put that passion into something else. And the passion now is I can leave my body to itself. I don't have to believe in the intrusive ideas that show up. I don't have to protect myself from a disease or illness because a lot of times when the mind gets out of the way, the body can heal itself. I can place my passion into relaxation and I can relax in the face of all these sensations and symptoms. I can relax in the face of all this fear, right? And when you start to relax in the face of fear, now you're bringing yourself out of a sympathetic state and into a parasympathetic state. Now you've got this balance. Once you have this balance between these two states, you're no longer sorting for the worst possible scenario. You're sorting for what could go right instead, right? Because for so long you've been sorting for what could go wrong right? Oh, look at the tree. It's moving. It may fall over. It may fall on me. I mean, anxiety sufferers have these, these, these filters, these perceptions of fear and threat constantly as they go about their day. That is so catastrophic. However, it doesn't have to be that way anymore, my friends. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Remember that you are more than anxiety. Don't ever forget it. Let's move forward together. Make sure to subscribe to this channel right now. And if you have any questions on any of my anxiety recovery programs, head over right here. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.